I know what you're thinking. You're a beginner at this. You don't have years of materials and tools to help you build custom bases for your miniatures. And even if you tried, you'd probably mess it up, right? Wrong. If you think that you'd never be brave enough to remove your ready-to-play Mythic Battles models from their bases and create a scenic base for them from scratch, this video is the perfect jumping off point for you. Welcome back to the channel everyone and to another episode of the Scenic Route, our irregular series bringing you ideas to enhance the basing and other scenic elements of your miniature gaming. My next painting project is Diomedes, another hero from Mythic Battles Pantheon's underrated Heroes of the Trojan War expansion, but there's something strange about this model that you may have noticed. For some reason Diomedes has been sculpted with one foot awkwardly raised, whilst the other is planted firmly on the ground. I say for some reason, but I suspect the reason is the sculptor was a little too influenced by a certain blockbuster film adaptation of the Trojan War, starring a certain actor whose name rhymes with Grad Kit. In this film, Achilles has a particularly acrobatic fighting style with lots of jumping attacks. This is probably why the Achilles model from the core box has a similar oddity. I really don't like the way that this looks, and whilst it would be very difficult to change the overall pose or sculpt of the model, we can improve things a little by giving Diomedes a scenic base with something to jump over or from to at least justify his stance. I constructed something similar for my Achilles model which you'll see here. In this video I want to do something similar for Diomedes, but I want to do so using nice straightforward techniques suitable for beginners, using as far as is possible cheap, easily available components and the fewest number of tools that I can. As with all videos in this series, the tools and techniques used have the potential to be harmful to you and those near you if you do not take reasonable safety precautions, so please consider your safety at all times. If you are a younger viewer, you should ask an adult to assist and supervise you for the more risky parts of this tutorial. A final note before we start, you'll see that I have chosen to fix the model to the base by what is quite a small contact point before painting the model, which does create some challenges in the painting process which we'll come on to later, but also has some advantages. I recommend watching the full tutorial before you decide whether to paint the model and then fix it to the base afterwards, or to follow the sequence I have used here as there are pros and cons to both. To remove Diomedes from his base I am going to use a sharp modelling scalpel. Unfortunately other methods such as using clippers are unlikely to give us a smooth surface under his foot, but the plastic isn't very hard and if you take your time you will reduce the risk of injury to yourself. Brace your hands against each other as you work so that you'll stop the movement swiftly if you do slip or the model comes away suddenly. Once done, Diomedes' mould lines are more accessible and easy to remove. These are the small ridges created by the manufacturing process and that will be visible following the painting process, so it's best to remove them now before we prime the model for painting. Fortunately Diomedes doesn't have too many of these. The most prominent is on his shin and I also like to smooth the edge of the shield. Usually you will find they're all in a straight line bisecting the model, but I did miss a line on the cape of my model which I wasn't expecting so do check yours thoroughly. Once complete, I like to go over the model with a large brush to remove any small plastic particles that remain, leaving Diomedes perfect and smooth for priming. If we try to fix Diomedes to the scenic base as is, you will find the connection point of his foot and the strength of the glue is very weak, and will likely result in the model coming away from the base over time. To strengthen the connection, we are going to put a pin in Diomedes' foot. To do this, you will require one of these pin vices, also known as manual hand drills. If you don't have one yourself, it's worth asking around your hobby friends or at your local gaming store to see if someone will lend you one and perhaps even show you how to use it so that you don't have to buy your own immediately. Brace Diomedes' leg so that there's less risk of you slipping. Even an unpowered drill bit will hurt if you stab your hand with it and to prevent his leg from bending. Applying minimal pressure, turn the drill with your hand and slowly create a hole beneath the heel of the model. Take your time with this. You don't want to drill all the way through Diomedes' ankle and out the other side, so it's important to be aware of how deep you are drilling and ensure you drill straight. Once you have about 2 or 3 millimetres of depth, you can stop. You'll also need a pin about the same thickness of the hole that you've drilled. I'm using a simple easy to find paper clip. I place the end of the paper clip into the hole to judge the length, and then use my clippers to cut the paper clip just slightly longer than the hole. 
Try to hold on to the other end of the paperclip as you do so, otherwise it will likely fly across the room and could cause injury. I then applied a tiny dot of superglue and pushed the pin gently into place. This will be sufficient to keep the pin where we want it until we secure Diomedes to his newly created base. One consideration if you're trying this tutorial yourself is whether to increase Diomedes' base size. The small base on which he arrives doesn't leave much room for scenic elements, and placing him on a larger 40mm base would give you a broader canvas and provide this hero with greater presence on the board. Spare bases are the sort of component that any wargamers in your gaming group may well be willing to part with for free, and if not, they are readily available to purchase online. However, I promised we'd complete this base with as little expense as possible, so I'm going to stick to using the original base. I have two sizes of rock here, these larger white rocks and some smaller, but still large in the context of Diomedes scale, grey basalt rocks. I bought a small bag of each of these from an online auction site some years back, and they weren't expensive and have lasted me quite a while as I only use a few at a time. You could equally pinch a few from a friend, or find some pieces of rock from your garden or another natural environment, as long as they are a similar size to what I have here. If you do use rocks from the outside world, I do recommend washing them thoroughly before use. I'm going to build a small mound of stones, perhaps a collapsed stone barrier of some kind, and I'm using superglue to do so. This particular variety of superglue is in gel form rather than liquid, which I find is much easier and stronger when gluing stones and it has a pen nozzle to make it easier to place the glue accurately. Simply apply to the rocks and stick them to the base as seen here. Once I've got my larger stones in place, I will typically add some of the smaller rocks which make the base appear more realistic, but also reinforce the structure we've created by increasing the number of contact points between the base and the larger stones. Once this is in place, I let the whole structure dry thoroughly before taking any further steps. You can see that it takes up about half of the base, creating the perfect surface to rest a shield against, and once dry it can take a modest amount of force without detaching from the base or breaking apart. For the shield, I have chosen to use this Spartan style shield from Footsaw Miniatures Mortal Gods range, which can be purchased in small quantities at a reasonable price. I like the design and scale of these shields a lot, and adding discarded shields is always a nice way to add flavour to a base. However, there's no need to use this particular brand. Again, any fantasy or historical wargamers in your gaming group or local hobby store may well have unwanted shields that they would be prepared to part with, and alternatively, bits can be bought in singles or as part of bits collections which are often sold off very cheaply from online auction sites. I'm using these modelling clippers to cut the bottom of the shield off and then clean this edge up carefully using the modelling scalpel. This is not strictly necessary but will create a better contact point with the base whilst also creating the impression that one end of the shield has become buried in the dirt, perhaps from Diomedes' weight. Modelling clippers are a useful tool to have around and can be found very cheaply if you look around discount stores or online auction sites. Once complete, run a line of superglue along this new edge and a little on the rocks at the point we want the shield to lean. Once you're happy with the angle of the shield, leave this to at least partially dry before the next step. Now that the main elements of the base are complete, I'm going to add some sand. I have a mix of fine and coarse sand here, which I find gives the final base more variety, but again this isn't strictly necessary, and this is another component you could scrounge from a fellow gamer or even find in the environment. I've seen people use all sorts of alternatives, from coffee grounds to baking soda. I would however recommend sterilising anything biological. I'm using cheap craft PVA glue to attach the sand to the base, which I'm applying by dispensing a little glue onto an old coffee jar lid and using an old paintbrush for accuracy. I'm applying slightly more glue on the edge of the shield to create a bit of a mound of sand, again selling the effect that the shield is partially buried. Once I have the glue in place, I submerge the base into my sand mix and then tap off the excess. I also run my finger around the edge to dislodge any sand there, and inspect the model to make sure there isn't any sand in any areas I don't want it to be on the final model. It is best to then let the glue dry before we attempt the next step. A quick word on my glue selection here, PVA glue is not strong enough to hold the sand onto the model in the long term, however I find that it is sufficient while the model is being prepared and becomes quite secure once the model has been primed with an aerosol primer. 
By the time layers of paint have been added along with the coat of varnish, I don't normally have problems with sand becoming loose from the base. If you're not planning to use a spray primer or are otherwise concerned, you could use liquid superglue to apply the sand to the base more securely. Just be mindful that doing so will significantly reduce the working time you have to remove any sand that has overspilled, not to mention the risk of sticking your fingers together. We now have a prepared Diomedes and a finished base, so you can probably predict our next step. Before fixing Diomedes to the base, take a look at the model and base together to determine exactly where you want him to stand, and then use the pin vise to drill a hole into the shield where his heel will go. You can use a spot of paint on the tip of the pen to place a guide marker which will help you remember where the hole needs to be drilled. As there is real stone directly beneath the shield, it is important to proceed slowly and stop when the drill breaks through the other side of the shield, otherwise you will blunt or break the drill bit that you are using. Depending on how close the shield is to the rock, you may also find you need to shorten the pin in Diomedes' foot. Apply some more of the gel superglue to the pin and to Diomedes' foot and hold the model in place in the position you want him to end up. 30 seconds or so of gentle pressure was sufficient for my model to form a reasonable bond with the shield, and then I gave the model some time for the glue to fully cure before priming. I've tried to provide lots of extra tips and thoughts as we've constructed the base in order to assist those trying scenic basing for the first time, but it's worth saying that to get to this point took me under an hour, ignoring the time between steps for the glue to dry. It's a relatively quick and extremely fun process, and I'd recommend anybody giving scenic basing a try at least once. Here's our model once all the basing has been completed. And here he is with a Xenothal Prime applied using a spray primer. As I mentioned earlier, I do find a spray primer provides some extra security in terms of bonding the sand to the base, but there are other priming techniques that would work fine. If you're not sure what Xenothal Priming is or why I've done it, Check out our 5 tools video which is also great for beginners and will explain this along with some other tools and techniques you'll find useful. The painting process was very similar to painting Hector which you can see in our helpful leather video so I won't show it in full here. However it is worth adding that the connection point to the shield is reasonably small meaning that rough painting techniques may dislodge diamonds during the painting process. As far as is possible, I would be gentle when painting this model, and if you do apply greater pressure using techniques such as dry brushing, I would recommend holding Diomedes himself to stabilise him. This will hopefully prevent the need to re-glue him during the process. Once the base has been painted, you could definitely add some extra finishing touches like static grass or tufts or flowers to suit your personal tastes. But on a base this small, this is definitely not essential. Diomedes is based, painted and ready to join our roster of heroes for Mythic Battles Pantheon. I hope you'll agree that this process improves what is frankly quite a strange sculpt without a scenic base. Perhaps this will encourage you to give this a go. There are of course lots of different ways you could make this design your own. Perhaps your model will be leaping over something entirely different. As long as you use something that you can drill into so that you can create a secure pin, pretty much anything goes. If this still feels like too big a leap, remember that even gluing a few rocks and some sand to the bases of your models before you prime and paint them will make a big difference to their final look. There's no wrong place to start when it comes to scenic basing, so why not give it a go? As always, we encourage you to share this video with others that may find it useful, to leave a comment telling us what you'd like to see next on the channel, and to subscribe if you think Nameless Seraphim Gaming might be the channel for you. We'll be back soon with more Mythic Battles content, but until then, Work hard, play better, and take care out there.